Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host Evan Tiga with me like always the man who is rumored to reportedly officially be in Spider-Man 3, Noah Bailey. <laughs> That's been a thing recently I've noticed a lot with like articles and like headlines and stuff it's like for example a couple weeks ago we talked about daisy ridley maybe coming back for a star wars project mm -hmm. it was like rumor daisy ridley reportedly in talks to be a new future star wars project i'm like is she is it a rumor is she is she if it's if it's reportedly why is it rumor like also in talks is nothing <laughs> but, no <laughs> no no and that's the thing it's like it's all these like whatever there's like a lull like there's all these like serious like grabbing for straws huh? oh oh uh, person person has been but reportedly potentially rumored to be possibly thinking about doing this and it's like Andrew garfield was reportedly rumored to be seen on set of spider-man 3 right and it's just any what? other tall guy like it yeah. could be anybody <laughs> like you know and it's, and it's the thing and the thing too is like a lot of times the people who are reporting it are just like throwing random shots in the dark mm -hmm. and like if they're right oh i was the first on the scene but if they're wrong oh you know that was just a rumor yeah, like you like, know it's kind of just like making like guesses to see okay if this hits like i just have foresight like you know or it's just mm -hmm. or like that it's based on nothing it's just an idea of, oh this would be cool maybe we should do this and then you know that's not like and then like the studio reads they're like did we bring this person in no where are they getting this? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we should. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> we could bring them in. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make a call. We guess we'll have connections. So the reason I bring that up specifically is because rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin is reportedly the main villain of Spider-Man No Way Home. Supposedly. Supposedly. Based on nothing <laughs> except that would be cool. Yeah. Like we right. already like this movie has already had so many rumors, so much speculation around it, so much like talk uh, like from like Sony studio heads about like future of Sony projects with Marvel Studios and like for the point where like first it was, you know, first like I, I remember the, the first one was from last year. It was like Electro, like, uh, what's the name? Uh, oh, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx's Electro is gonna be mm -hmm. in this movie. It's like, okay, right. that's neat. Like, sure, you know, sure, why not? And then it was Andrew Garfield and Tony Maguire also. Right. Be in this movie. Like, <laughs> okay, calm, calm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Every villain from any Spider-Man movie ever is gonna be in this movie. Yeah, they have like. <laughs> it was ridiculous, like to the point where they're just like, it was like the. <laughs> It was like everybody's in it, like the dual flip guy, like every, like every, or not dual flip, but not the pizza guy, or yeah. like everybody <laughs> is back. And it's just like, guys, come on, it's a meme. Like, it's not like, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like I am excited for this movie. The mm -hmm. first two Spider Man uh, MCU movies, I think, are very, very solid. I think the first one's a little better, but I think they're both, you know, very solid Spider Man movies. I, I just hope this movie doesn't try to just do something it never like was ever going to be like it is a marvel movie it is a I, I just don't want it to try to like force this multi like sony multiverse into the mcu without it making sense and taking away from a from a strong trilogy that tom holland could have had right like, because apparently even the lizard from Amazing Spider-Man 1 is going to be in there. I'm like, I don't want him. <laughs> no. I mean, honestly, the way I see it is like the only way they could like actually do this, I think it's going to be one of those. It's going to be like a throwaway scene kind of like, like, so we look at these are Spider-Mans of other worlds. And it'll be like a quick scene of like a Tobey Maguire scene, mm -hmm. a quick scene with Andrew Garfield. Scene. But it's like, they're not going to be like in the movie. Like they're not going to like talk yeah. and be buddies and all that. Like, I, I don't be. think they're going to go full into the Spider-Verse with mm -hmm. it. But I think because, you know, oh, that would be so cool if this, if that, if that, if that. And it's like, you know, maybe they could throw something in, but there's no way they're making this just like a shared movie like that. That was one, that wouldn't, I mean, that would be, I don't, I think they couldn't handle that. That would be too huge. Mm -hmm. Plus, who's going to be Jameson? You've already got two J.K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I, 
I think my biggest issue with all of these rumored, c- confirmed, whatever, like the villains being in this movie is that they were already pretty confidently setting up the Sinister Six mm-hmm. in these movies. Like, you know, we already have Scorpion and the Shocker and uh, Vulture. Vulture and Mysterio is probably not dead. Yeah. Like, you just need two, maybe two three more. others if you don't want a Shocker back. Like, but, yeah, they can do that. Yeah, and like the the world is already set up perfectly for Green Goblin to just like appear out of the ether during Armor Wars or you know something like that. Anything, yeah. So like, it, it's not necessary to bring in the Rhino and Green Goblin and all these other people from these other different universes. Right. You don't need it. You can set your ego. You can easily set them up with the world you've already been building towards, but they. I don't necessarily want them to. No, I don't I know. Mean, it would be fun but like there's no way there would actually like i i really doubt it just because yeah that would be way too much going on you'd have to either reintroduce reestablish characters because i mean at this point i mean the raimi movies are hitting to almost 20 years old mm-hmm. which is crazy to think about but like yeah like you know i mean a lot of people aren't gonna you know like obviously yeah like some of the older fans but like the younger generations are gonna be like all right what's going on (laughs) yeah like especially if like let's say willem defoe's green goblin green goblin does appear in this movie and like you know he's a big bad and then i guess at the end of the movie he goes back to his own dimension i let's say let's say he goes back to his own dimension at the end of this movie i feel you can't really do another green goblin like that's right you can't make a green goblin in this world if you've already done a different green goblin would kind of lose the impact of it wouldn't be the same yeah <clears throat> no and like in the thing too like it just kind of yeah it would kind of yeah it would just kind of ruin that character same if they brought back like doc ock or something like it would kind of not ruin it but it's like i feel like now if you go straight to that character it's kind of like eh, not so not so cool anymore so like yeah uh, I don't know. Like, I think a trailer will come sometime in June. I'm really feeling that. Um, <clears throat> like, hopefully, that trailer will give us a better idea of just what this movie <laughs> is. We already, you know, Peter already has to deal with the world knowing it's him. Right. <laughs> so, like, we got to get past that first. That's already a huge deal. Yeah. Like I said, I just don't want this movie to, to try to be bigger than it needs to be. Like, we, like you're already dealing with one of the biggest, uh, you know, things from Spider-Man comics, where the world knows or who he is. You don't need to also force the Sinister Six in there, let alone it being a Sinister Six from a different dimension that no. have no connection to this Spider-Man. It's, I don't know. I, yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, Sinister Six would probably be okay, <laughs> but yeah, different dimensions of Six would be doing <clears throat> way too much. Mm. But I don't. I don't know. I like. I think as long as Venom, you know, Tom Hardy's Venom doesn't show up in this world, because we need another shot at, uh, you know, Peter with the symbiote. Because <laughs> if you just throw Venom in there, then you're just skipping that step. But, uh, yeah. yeah, don't. I mean, they. I mean, they look fine doing their own thing. Just let them be over there. It's fine. You know, Venom yeah. Two is coming out later. Like, just let them be over there. It's mm-hmm. fine. So good, Morbius. I guess. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, oh, man. Morbius. All it, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like grabbing at straws. But it'd be like that. And but, also, last week, it was confirmed that Aaron Taylor Johnson has been cast to play Craven the Hunter in mm-hmm. the Craven the Hunter solo movie. Yeah. I did see that. So they're I going all in with this. I did not see that coming. No. No, but I mean, he played Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. Yeah, so that's why I said that thing. Ah, uh, he says in the thing. Yeah, there it is, there it is. <laughs> what you didn't see that coming? Exactly. <laughs> Gets gunned down. Ugh. I think that's interesting, though. He signs up for. I think he's. I think it's interesting because, like, there was a there was obviously the like the whole Wandavision like opportunity to be brought back, and it's kind of like they defer that maybe for this role but it's like i mean that was kind of a one-off so it feels like you could have done both yeah but 
theoretically, depending on what happens in Spider-Man No Way Home, Aaron Taylor Johnson playing a different character could show up in the MCU again. No, they 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 wouldn't do that. They don't really. I mean, do they really? Re- I mean, they could, but like they shouldn't. I wouldn't. That'd be kind. No, of they cool. shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, the do they really reuse characters? I don't think they ever or actors. I mean, they yes. Um, like uh, assuming not not including Stan Lee, of course. But I mean, you know what I mean. The like, the actress that played Minerva, one of like the Kree soldiers from Cap- Captain Marvel, she is one of the Eternals. Okay. Okay. She was like a kind of minor character in. But yeah, but it's like that was like yeah, but that like I wouldn't even have known that if you didn't tell me. Yeah. But like other than that, like. Not. It. Not like any significant so. character, really. No. Yeah, because there's so many of them, so it's like you can always get someone new. Like. Yeah, it's just it's. First of all, the fact that like, I didn't even know a Craven the Hunter movie was in the works, and then it's just oh, here's the casting announcement for this movie you didn't know about. Like, oh, okay, okay. cool. I guess. I mean, are they? I mean, if they just announced the casting, I mean, they're not very. Do you think they're very far at all? It's probably? apparently coming out January thirteenth, twenty three. Okay. So. I guess they'll film it next year. Yeah, they've got time. But yeah, I mean, that's just the thing. It's like, I feel kind of worried because it's like there are a lot of, you know, granted, maybe not the, not as many heavy hitters outside of Venom and like kind of Carnage with that, like, mm. you know, Craven, Morbius, not the like, you know, A-list villains, but like, I feel like they're kind of taking a lot of Spider-Man villains out here. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Like Sony has heavy creative control over the the marvel spider-man movies why wouldn't you try to incorporate those characters into the mcu spider-man stuff because craven the hunter seems perfect for you know the next movie just as as like a standalone villain but that's not happening now i guess not (laughs) i guess yeah like because i was thinking that i was like yeah everyone knows who he is so craven comes from africa is like yo I'm going to hunt this dude. He's mm-hmm. Spider-Man, the yeah. ultimate prey or whatever. Not to mention, Craven the Hunter is a woefully uninteresting character if he's not going after Spider-Man. Like, what? who cares about Craven the Hunter's origin if he's not go, If he's not a Spider-Man antagonist? Like, who cares? <laughs> Maybe he'll go after Morbius instead. Maybe. <laughs> oh, or, I don't know. Or Venom or, Venom or something? That's but I mean, even weird. that doesn't even sound <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> interesting. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do. Because to be fair, I mean, Venom, I mean, Venom's still kind of cool, but it's like, yeah, Venom without Spider-Man doesn't really make sense. Mm. Craven without Spider-Man just seems kind of like, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm sure they'll figure something mm. out, I guess. Yeah, I, like, ideally, I would want all of the Sony, the Spunk movies, the Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel characters movies to take place. <laughs> over there somewhere and then sp- yeah, the just, actual spider-man movies yeah. place here i mean but, they are just making money just keep them over here i guess yeah there's a but depending on how deals and contracts play out they could come together please no weirdly <laughs> please no but we'll see we'll see or at um, least don't do it with tom holland spider-man maybe like wait till they're done and then throw your, a new Spider-Man into it, which I know still wouldn't really work, but like, yeah, yeah, don't ruin it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, we'll see. Like I said, the trailer's coming probably at some time, like probably like within weeks at this point. So we'll we'll see if, what that trailer shows us. I do. Yeah. Well, kind of see what Disney's up to now. Apparently, Okoye is getting her own Disney Plus show. Really? Yeah. This is a different show from the, like, the, like, Wakanda show. Right. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was kind of like, aren't we already getting, like, a just Wakanda? Like, not to, like, diss Okoye, but, like, I feel like that's kind of her, you know, yeah. thing. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know about this. This worries me a little, but... We'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's like a background. Maybe <laughs> she's the new ruler. I don't know. When is this like probably like after Black Panther to probably yeah, probably after Black yeah, Panther. Yeah, like so like we'll probably have more idea of where this is going. You know, maybe she's the new Black Panther. Who knows? Like maybe I, mean, I don't think it works like that, but I mean at the same time. Eh. I don't know. I 
like I never pegged her of ha- as having her own show before now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying she couldn't carry her own thing, but like I never, like I never assumed she would get one. She doesn't like seem like that kind of character. But yeah. if you know, I I I generally speaking trust Marvel things to be pretty oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm yeah. sure it will. It would would be at least good. <laughs> so. right. I mean, like to be to be fair. I mean, before a couple of years ago, do you think Wanda could have had her own show? Before Infinity War, no. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like like imagine if it was like right at like imagine if it was like right before Civil War or something. Like, yeah. You know, no. Like right, right, like between that Ultron Civil War time. I was <laughs> like, I mean, uh, you know, because like. You're like she's interesting but you don't know that but it's like i don't know it's like these disney plus shows so far have shown that like you know maybe there's you might like these characters more than you realize now obviously with like loki we already knew that oh, was yeah. gonna be great so like <laughs> we don't need to be convinced but even like falcon and winter soldier it kind of was like all right like you had to like you know it was two of them so you're like you were like okay i can go with it but like it wasn't like a, oh yeah like this is the show everyone's been asking for like it's kind of just like okay sure i'll watch it and it was pretty good so it worked yeah, out it's been kind of interesting that the two marvel shows we've gotten so far are based on two characters at the same time yep one division and then falcon winter soldier it's right yeah yeah interesting yeah like, i think i think that's on purpose though because like kind of in the same way that like certain marvel characters can't like carry their own movies without like another like avenger level hero with them Mm -hmm. i think if it was like if the show was just about falcon i don't think it'd be as engaged or if it was just just about about falcon it would be a different show exactly yeah like which that's not a bad thing because again the falcon mm -hmm. stuff especially like as it goes on it's really good but Mm -hmm. at the same time it's like you need that like one two punch so to speak yeah plus like if you are to delve heavily into the like the legacy of the shield and legacy of being captain america it makes sense for bucky to be there right yeah It'd be weird if he wasn't mm-hmm. like and the whole wandavision thing i kind of like it how like wanda's got like the work on envisions like with us trying to figure out what's going on uh-huh. and, and we're kind of just like i, I don't know man you tell me like we're one of my favorite like little like little bits from from one division was i think it was episode five where uh like vision realized like I, do i even walk to work like i don't think i like do i just i just appear at work like <laughs> like he I, I think he said when like you know on my walk to work every day i don't see any kids but like i think he was just kind of like trying to make the world make sense because he just appears at the at the, the place and then just the next slide yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like or like when or like i think it's the second one where he's like at work with it or maybe it's the first episode mm-hmm. i don't remember but it's like he asked guys like what do we do here oh yeah we know we just make sure we maximize efficiency you ever did that but what do we do? Do we like produce something? Do we? Oh, that's a good one. But, ah, and like the laugh track kicks in, trying to get him to shut up, and he's like, "I, I still don't know what we do. But I don't understand." Like, oh, but no, it's yeah. But that's why it's I like that it's so interesting because it's like you know, there's these two dynamics. Wanda's kind of just trying to keep everything quiet, and everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's not fine. And Vision's kind of like what is going on <laughs> we're just gonna sit on that couch and just reset everything like he always do like like he knows it's not yeah oh it's great okay. oh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, but yeah i i, I did kind of noticed i was like it's always been two characters so it'll be interesting going forward like loki definitely can carry his own show a thousand oh, yeah. percent oh yeah but also, it's like, okay, but going forward, it's like, are this going to be the theme? Is it going to be, you know, is Okoye just going to be Okoye? Is it going to be like, you know, because it's like, if we have a Wakanda show mm-hmm. and the Okoye show, it's going to be kind of like, okay, so unless the shows are going to heavily overlap, she's probably going to have to either be somewhere else or be doing something else. Yeah. It, yeah, depending on what exactly happens in the Wakanda show, I'd imagine more of like an anthology 
Mm -hmm. But if it is more like a, I don't really know why that would be different than Black Panther 2. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm worried about. Because I'm like, I feel like we're trying to do three different things in the same thing. And like, you know, granted, you know, for obvious reasons, it's going to be different. But it's like, what are we doing here? Like, I don't don't know. And I mean, again, I trust it completely. But Mm -hmm. it's also like, all right, I got to see this thing. Because I don't know what's going on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm just stupidly excited for loki coming out next yeah. yeah next wednesday yep um i think we're still getting at least hawkeye this year mm-hmm. i think miss marvel might also come out this year this year early next year so, yeah um yeah and even those shows will probably have more than one main focus character yeah granted and not hawkeye in is title. hawkeye and uh right and bishop exactly and then like miss marvel probably um Captain Marvel. I mean, who knows? Like, what's going on there? Yeah, maybe Monica or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that too. I forgot. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, just we'll see. Yeah. So She Hulk. Yeah, She Hulk's coming next year. Yeah. And we know that Hulk. Hulk is probably like you know, Smart Hulk is going to be in it at some point. Yeah, I mean, so bad. Mark Ruffalo in some capacity will yeah. show up. <laughs> <clears throat> Whether it's um, normal or CGI, I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Another nerd news. So yeah, um, E3 has officially kind of not really, but kind of has begun already. Um, like <laughs> you know, E3 branding hasn't kicked in yet, but people are already started announcing stuff. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's yeah. about that time. Yeah, I know Horizon Zero Dawn had a Horizon Two for the Forbidden West had a trailer that showcased just new stuff about that game. Still looks very good, very pretty, you know, like a natural escalation from the first one. <clears throat> uh, what I really want to talk about is the Sonic presentation that happened mm-hmm. actually on the, at the same time as the Horizon one. Um, and at that uh, press conference, I they announced like a couple of like different like shows, like crossovers, a couple of like honestly like a lot of different sonic content is coming within the next couple of years but i'm gonna focus in on what i think are the three biggest announcements first being sonic origins which is a compilation of a bunch of classic games from the from the uh genesis and mm-hmm. back then including one two three three and knuckles and cd i think maybe a couple others as well weirdly enough that's coming next year like Sorry, my phone's going off. I didn't want to like leave and grab it, but it's being obnoxious. <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, like this the Sonic collection of a bunch of Genesis ROMs is coming out sometime next year. Mm-hmm. That that seems a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like why? You know, it's like <laughs> Maybe there's more to it than that, but it kind of just feels like, oh yeah, next year it's like, wait, huh? <laughs> like when the Mario 30th, 35th anniversary thing was announced, that came out like two weeks later. When the Mega Man collections were announced, those that came out like maybe a month or two later. Right. Like, whenever there's a big collection like this, they seem to come out. It's usually very, pretty soon. You yeah. Know, like the premise being <laughs> like, you know, these are a bunch of already made, older. We have on file games that we can just, you know, take and put together and just sub them out. We don't need to like, so I don't know if they're like maybe adding some stuff or like maybe there's a different, I mean, I don't know. Cause it feels like there's a reason to hold it except to hold it. Yeah. Apparently I kind of read this recently where apparently Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles had some kind of license, like music license issue that maybe forbade it from being released until next year or something in which case i feel you could just do the games with all the games sans sonic and knuckles and then in an update later just add it for free i don't know yeah if maybe like you said maybe they are adding a bunch of different other like stuff that's not just save states and rewind features and stuff but like like i'm sure it would be i'm sure it was going to be cool you know to have like all these sonic games all at the same time not saying I would have like preferred a 3D Sonic collection, 
but I think I'll be more willing to get a, like, for example, Sonic Adventure 1, 2, and Heroes on mm -hmm. one, one disc. I think I would have been more inclined to, to get that over uh, all the classic games, but you know, it's, I, I'm sure Sonic games are going to love it. So. Yeah, it's like, you know, it, you know, you can't pick everything on there, but at yeah. the same time, it's better than nothing at all, first exactly. of all. And also, like, yeah, bring them back. Yeah. The classics. Uh, they also announced Sonic Colors Ultimate. Did you ever play Sonic Colors on the Wii? Mm -mm. No? Okay. It's, it's generally considered to be the best, like, like modern 3D Sonic game. Um, okay. It came out, came out in 2011 uh i i never actually played it i know I, I think i played a demo at gamestop one time and never actually played like the mm -hmm. the full game uh yeah it's, it's just a, like an updated port of that with like some extra content in there and stuff it, it it if it's called ultimate it better deliver something that's more than just sonic sonic colors but a couple of new things it better be like I don't know that that name you don't throw around lightly. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on the same platform as Smash, you can't use Ultimate very lightly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, better, they better deliver. Yeah, although it is only going to be a, a forty dollar port or okay. you know game. So like, I was probably going to get it anyway because, like I said, I hadn't played Sonic Colors, but I it was back when I. I was really playing the Wii. It was one of those games that like, I always heavily considered getting, but it's kind of never really got around to it. But now mm -hmm. that it's coming to all platforms, even if it were 60, I would still probably get it. It's hmm. coming out in September. Oh, that's for my birthday. So yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and lastly, the big uh, final announcement was it was a trailer of Sonic running a thing we had never seen before <laughs> running through a forest again a location we had never seen before <laughs> and he like he like speeds up and like runs in a big circle and he's like a blue trail behind him and like that circle ends up being like part of a logo and then it said 2022 and that's it the logo didn't even like look like anything it was just like a weird mm -hmm. logo 2022. Sonic's having releasing another game next year. Yay! Maybe. This seems to be a thing. <laughs> like it's you know, like a really dumb recent trend with with uh, games recently where like they just they announce that a game. They're not going to announce the title of the game yet. They're not going to tell you what the game is. There's like. Look! Look out in the future. There's gonna be a, a a game in this franchise in the future, like Metroid Prime Four, Mass Effect, Dragon Quest Twelve. Just got announced the day before this happened. Same exact thing. It was just the title. That's it. Like, don't even have a release date or anything. Uh, <laughs> they had a three. Like, so many times this happens. <laughs> it's like, like, at least have a name attached to it. <laughs> yeah, give us know. something. <laughs> It's just, but I love it because like everyone's like, oh yeah, this looks awesome. Oh, this is I'm like, we don't have anything. <laughs> we got it's Sonic, right. which you know, you know, okay, but like you know, it's like we don't. You know, I don't know. I guess I'm one of those people like I want to see more than just like a name before I get hyped, unless mm -hmm. it's something that I've never seen before, which obviously for Sonic is not the case. So it's like we'll see, but yeah, I just. It's so vague when it's like, oh, we're gonna really get them. It's like, I mean, not really. Like until you show something that I can like see. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not a big as Sonic fan as some other people, but it's like, I don't know. For most things, until I see something worth like, mm -hmm. you know, freaking out about, I'm not gonna freak yeah. out. But like Sonic Colors Ultimate is very cool. Um, like that trailer, we actually, you know, got a trailer for this game. It mm -hmm. looked just as colorful. It looked like I ran just as well, like just gonna be Sonic Colors, but updated to modern, you know, to modern tech. Like that's great. You know, an old Sonic compilation. Uh, we haven't had one of those in a, in a long while. I think Sonic, mm -hmm. like I said, I think Sonic and Knuckles wasn't able to be uh, like ported to anything since like since the Genesis. So like that is cool. 
but I think that's not cool enough to like to to earn teasing the next Sonic game with him running in a circle. Yeah, without a name, I don't know <laughs> about anything except just twenty twenty two. Cool. I, I, honestly, also, I think if the Sonic Origins collection had hap- had did come out was announced for this year, I think the the um the Sonic twenty twenty two game teaser would have stung a little less but because like this is a third this was the 30th anniversary stream and two of the major announcements are going to come out later like next year i don't know it seems a little odd but whatever <laughs> i think it's a lot to see but yeah yeah like i said sonic colors ultimate is a, is a win for me um uh next up uh we officially have release dates for both Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl and Pokemon Legends Arceus. The Diamond and Pearl remakes are coming out on November 19th, 2021, and Legends Arceus is coming out on January 28th, 22. Gotta love it. <laughs> Would it shock you or surprise you in any way if I told you that the Pokemon fan base lost it over release dates like they got mad over release like, dates. upset yes it wouldn't shock me because the pokemon fan base is scary in a word <laughs> but <laughs> yeah but it's kind of like why are you mad <laughs> so there are several answers to your question first the main reason why people got upset over this over this was that they perceive November 19th and January 28th to be too close together, therefore both feeling rushed, even though we haven't had a second trailer for either game since their initial announcement. More, like, more specifically talking about Legend Arceus, January 28th feels too soon for that game to come out. Even though the initial trailer said early 2022 can't get much earlier than january January. 22 (laughs) i like i always i was always expecting that to be like a march ish game although i was also i'm also fully expecting breath of the wild 2 to be next march Mm -hmm. it would make sense for them to not release two games that are Early, you know, Breath of the Wild 2 and then a game that was heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild at the same time. Right. That would be a little dumb. So, like, pushing it. Space it out enough. Yeah, Which, yeah, yeah, that'll probably still come out in, like, March or so there's time. Yeah. Also, the last time we saw this game was back in February. Almost a year before it's going to come out. And what we saw was probably, like, pre-alpha footage from months prior to to like probably footage that was like that was taken from a build from like October November like whenever presentations are made the the like the demo or the the if there's like some big Nintendo direct let's say the presentations that are made for that direct are made based on demos and builds of the game that are from at least 3 months prior like these are not these are not finished products generally speaking when you see the trailer mm-hmm. And as you, I mean, clearly, Legends Arceus was not a finished project because, like, the frame rate was kind of terrible at some places. So, like, <clears throat> they were there, but like, even let's assume for a minute, even if that were like, they had started like that tra- that trailer was from a build from February. That's still a year out from what's coming out. So, like, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, instead, even though there was no trailer attached to this release date, people just assume it's going to be rushed because that's too soon. Like, are you, are you, why? <laughs> because I, sometimes it, just, it doesn't matter. It's like if it's any sooner, it's too rushed. If it's more later, oh, why are you making us wait so long? Mm-hmm. It's like there's no winning. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Plus, it doesn't help the fact that people can't wrap their minds around the fact that Diamond Pro remakes are being made by a different studio, still mm-hmm. held still helmed by the same guy who like who has been like the director of Pokemon Janucci Masada 
it's still being they're still being directed by Masada, but they're being made by a like outsourced company. Whereas Legend Arceus is like Prime Game Freak. Right. So it's so they're not rushing two games out at the same time. Because the same people other. are it's like if you had a Disney movie and a Pixar movie like right one after another. It's like mm-hmm. yes, it's all owned by the same company, but it's like there's very different people working here and working here. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, like I just I yeah, the Pokemon fan base in general are kind of the worst. <laughs> like every tiny little thing they could possibly complain about, they do. And like I understand having high standards for your favorite franchise. I get it. There are so many things that frustrate me about Pokemon in general, even dating back to the very beginning. Like there have been things about the entire timeline of Pokemon that I feel could be changed the, for the better. And if, if you ask me, I will like go in like at least a half hour spiel about it. <laughs> but, right, but like <laughs> never to the point where it's like every tiny little minuscule thing about Sword and Shield or Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee or or you know what we've seen so far about these new games. Every tiny little detail people just freak out over, and I don't understand it. <laughs> I can't be happy because it's not the perfect mm-hmm. and genuine. You know, it's because it's like a lot of people just have this idea of what they want it to be. And it's like, oh, this isn't what I got. So I don't like it. And it's just like, it's going to be good. Like, probably. Like, there are definitely some concerns I have about the Diamond Pearl remakes, which I've said before, where I think there's a very high chance <clears throat> that game will use the Diamond Pearl Pokedex, where the Platinum Pokedex was better in every single way. <laughs> It was actually usable, <laughs> like <clears throat> like in Devon and Pearl, there was literally only two fire types to pick one from. If you don't choose Chemchar, literally only Ponyta is the only fire type in the entire region. <laughs> like Infernape was the only new fire type aside from <coughs> aside from a couple of uh, evolutions of old Pokemon, which aren't in the main Pokedex or new forms or legendaries, which you can't get, you know, pre. Uh, free being the elite four so like ponyta is the only fire type available if you don't pick chimchar no. yeah not to mention how like there's kind of going off of that there are so many evolutions of previous gen pokemon like galate electivire again mega etc that just you aren't accessible in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex, whereas they are in Platinum. So, like, it is a huge fear and concern of mine that Diamond and Pearl remakes will only use the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex. Because I've already, I'm already like planning out my team, my potential team for this game. Most of them require the Platinum decks. Right. <laughs> so, if the Platinum deck isn't in the game, they're the chance of me getting these games are 50 50 like <laughs> and like i never miss mainline pokemon games this might be the first one on that factor alone but my like, thing is like okay. why wouldn't they just use the planet because it's like just because oh it's not the authentic diamond and pearl but it's like but that's what platinum's for <laughs> i know i know <laughs> <I'm well aware. laughs> that's why i'm here like yes, you're right like platinum is superior in every way. <clears throat> I'm trying to think, there is I think I think there's like four Pokemon you cannot actually get who are who are in Diamond and Pearl. But like the version exclusive to those games, but they're not in platinum. I thought of those four. I don't. Th- but there's you know so many others that are available. Um, the story it just is cleaner. The gym leaders are more challenging <laughs> the level curves a little better the post game is better like there are so many things down in pro remakes should take from platinum and i fear that they won't <laughs> there was one little bit of evidence in the original trailer that made me believe that they they would take from the take from platinum and i'll be more optimistic but like there really wasn't so maybe at e3 they'll call my nerves but i don't, I don't know you know i'll have to see but yeah, I mean, but that yeah, but that just <clears throat> that does sound like one of those things that like 
logically would make no sense not to use it, but at the same time, I could totally see them doing that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Some of these games and corporations, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, but yeah, Legend RCS coming out on January 28th of next year is earlier than I expected, but I don't think it's going to be a rushed product. Like, the fact that they were able to push it out of this year alone, because usually Nintendo, like, you know, wants a big Pokemon game for, for the holiday, for the holiday season. And my guess is originally, like, if COVID, ha- if COVID hadn't happened, my guess is that Diamond and Pearl remakes would have been like a summer game. And then Legend of Arceus would have been that November uh, of, of this year, I guess, but they got pushed back a little bit. Um. But the fact that they it was it did get pushed out of 2021, and they're choosing to to announce it for January, shows to me that they're further along than people think, and it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. <clears throat> yeah. So kind of sticking with Pokemon for just a second. Um, apparently, Target has just completely stopped selling Pokemon cards. What? Why? So only Target. I have a feeling there are going to be other other places as well that are oh. they're going to start doing. Pokemon that. didn't get canceled today. <laughs> Pokemon didn't get canceled. Kind of in this era of like, you know, Bitcoin and NFTs and other intangible, valuable <laughs> goods <laughs> that have value because we decide they have value. <laughs> <clears throat> the same general principle is kind of happening with Pokemon cards right now, where like first edition uh, rare cards from like from the you know from the '90s, like the first like uh, unopened packs from the original release back in the '90s, those have always been pretty valuable. Like first edition uh, rare Charizard is I think still the most valuable card ever. Like it has been the most valuable card ever like throughout the entire timeline, but just now it's even even more crazy. So like, yeah, first edition cards have always been really, really like valuable for whatever reason. But now I think, I think it was Logan Paul. One of the Paul brothers on YouTube who are, idiots um, <laughs> decided to like get into like card openings and valuation and stuff and because of that other people have jumped on the train and because of that like not only has first edition stuff prices skyrocketed but also just pokemon cards across the board have skyrocketed in in, in value for like even like a random trainer and energy cards are way more expensive than they should be <laughs> <laughs> Which, over the last couple of months, this has led to constant just like rampages through through convenience stores and you know supermarkets and stuff of grown men trying to go buy Pokemon cards <laughs> so they can hoard them hope yep. and hope that ten years from now they'll be millionaires. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, it's a children's playing card game. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> What? Don't talk bad about children's stuff. We love children entertainment on this. No, what I'm like, what I'm saying is, it is a card that like is a it is a game that should be played yes. by yes. you know children primarily, but you know really yes. everybody. It of course, be played by people. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember Pokemon Go was mostly like grown ups. I mean, like. Oh, yeah, exactly. like but, but there's You've no, got like 30 like, year old people walking down the street I, all day. I'm not like making fun of anybody who, yeah, who I know. plays Pokemon, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, you know. But the fact that these, these late 20, early 30 year olds who, who are storming targets <laughs> just so they can buy booster packs and box sets, just so they can hope that they'll still have value. X number of years from now is insane to me. <laughs> like they're they're, not, they're taking all of the fun out of the card. Something similar happened with uh, these uh, with McDonald's 
uh, McDonald's had a had a Pokemon card uh, promotion in Happy Meals a couple of months ago. Kids got, didn't get to have them. Because, yeah, he got grown ups taking them all. Literally, there were, there were pictures of people who just had warehouses full of Happy Meals. Like, are you kidding? Me? That's wild. <laughs> but I, I mean. It doesn't surprise me because that I mean I could see that easily because it's like, yeah, like you said, anything that could potentially grow in value is like because it's the same thing with like any kind of like cards or like any like collectibles and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I mean, same with like video games, like you know, like some of these like oh this super rare, like anything. It's just like but I think the thing that just trips me up up the most about this kind of stuff and like the, the same general concept with bitcoin and nfts and that kind of stuff but like i don't i can't wrap my brain around why this stuff has value like at least when you have like money in the bank yes a lot of that money is fake but at least you know like it used to be real like it you like it's based on something like the gold standard still exists. Why gold has value, whatever. <laughs> like, you know, there's at least some basis for this this amount that is presented, you know, on a twenty dollar bill in your bank account, et cetera. Whereas mm-hmm. a trading card, you buy a booster pack for a buck fifty, and then the cards in there could be worth thousands. Like, how does that make sense? <laughs> like, I mean, it's basically loot boxes before loot boxes were a thing. Yeah. But yeah, people are just hoarding them for themselves and, you know, pushing kids on the way. Get out of my way. Let me get my. (laughs) Like 30 boosters. Like, I'm sure the Pokemon company is loving this because. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) They're printing cards as fast as they can and they're being bought as fast as they can. Yeah. They're like, you know, they're like, yeah, these are just trash throwaway cards. And people are like, yes, yes, give me your money. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like the golden ticket all over again. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't understand it. But like, I honestly, like, I don't, in a way, I don't want, like, you know, kids to to miss out on the appeal of Pokemon through the cards because I got in, I technically got into Pokemon through, uh, like, through the cards because t- mm. I think technically my first exposure to Pokemon was actually through a Happy Meal and like, really? Yeah. Um, and then start watching the show and stuff from there. Right. But like, if that were me, if if me growing up in that you know developmental period of my life, if I were growing up now and there was a Happy Meal promotion with Pokemon cards, I probably wouldn't be able to get that experience in the first place exactly. because because grown men would just hoard them for no reason. <laughs> kind of like you're ruining it for, like because it was someone it's like it's because it was their childhood they're ruining so it could potentially not be someone else's childhood mm-hmm. exactly Granted, kids are way different than they used to be but like True. still like that's not the point mm-hmm. and like i in a way kind of going off the thought in a way i'm kind of glad that target is no longer selling these cards because they also uh stop selling baseball cards and a couple other different kinds really? of cards like because those cards also cards in general have just kind of uh gone up in value over time but like the pokemon cards really sparked that demand <clears throat> in a way i kind of i'm kind of glad they, they they're kind of trying to curtail that the craziness but yeah kids not being able to to buy them is i don't know a little disappointing yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but yeah, yeah, it, it happens, but yeah, yeah, that's interesting. It's like a new era because, granted, like, yeah, I guess like cards and stuff aren't really the kids' toy of choice these days, but at the same time, it's like, man, that's kind of yeah. What what needs to happen is whoever, whoever, um, can make a, a new Pokemon. Uh, trading card game video game there were a couple Ooh. of those on the on the game boy color mm-hmm. which are like are actually very good game like which they legitimately teach you how to play the game like 
you start by picking either a, a grass fire or water deck and you have like you have rivals or tournaments like it's actually like a pretty like a very complete game where the protagonist is you playing the trading card game and it's okay I, I gotta ask because I never, because I never, I never like understood how the trading card game is. It kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh with Pokemon cards, or like it's in some ways more complicated, in some ways less complicated. Like <clears throat> essentially, so okay, basic overview of I haven't played. There we go. <laughs> this my my like basic knowledge of the game might be heavily, uh, might be a little aged because I haven't really delved into the to like the meta recently but mm -hmm. when i was like into the trading card game back in like 2008 <laughs> the, <laughs> the like essentially every pokemon has or like the standard pokemon some have more some have less have like some have a like passive ability that does something and then usually two attacks one attack just does like you know, 10, 20 damage, and the other tech does 30 plus damage with like some kind of modifier or some other effect. Each time you want to attack, you have to attach, you have to have attached a number of energy cards, whether that be a specific, like let's say it's a Pikachu who has you know, like tackle with a 10 damage and then like Thunderbolt. Pokemon card names have. have Pokemon cards have a bunch of different weird names for attacks. So let's just say Thunder, Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. and then Tackle. Tackle does 10 damage. Thunderbolt does 50. Tackle, you need one single colorless in the energy, which could be either like a, it's like the normal, like white energy, or it could be literally any energy. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have at least one energy attached to them, you can use Tackle. In order to use Thunderbolt, you need at least three uh, lightning energies and one colorless. So you could have you know, four lightning on there, same effect. And then you can attack using a thunderbolt. Um, there's also a like there's also a thing called a retreat a retreat cost where if you if a if your Pikachu was in battle and like the opponent, you, you know, you you won that turn, the opponent was able to to i guess summon a uh a, let's say golem that you can't deal with because because your moves are weak to him so instead of doing 50 you would do minus 30 from that you'd only be doing 20 for damage whereas he would do double damage to you uh let's say the pikachu's retreat cost is two energy as long as you have two energy attached you can you can discard those energies and pull them back to your hand Okay. So that's the very basic overview of how a battle goes. There's also like bench Pokemon where like if you can like swap between them, I think. And there's also like a bunch of other different um, like trainer cards, which either let you draw cards or affect stuff on the battlefield or like, you know, deal poison damage. Like just, you know, there's a variety of different stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, probably. It's probably evolved a lot since then. I know they there's now like GX Mon and VX Mon and like all these like weird new attacks and just the way the game plays is different now. But that's the very basic overview. It's not that complicated, but some at the same time it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not if essentially if you know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, you will have to learn how to play Pokemon cards. Fair enough. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's just different. I mean, I assumed there was a lot. I was like way different than everything, but I was like, okay, conceptually, like yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I like, guess I also kind of forgot the part where, like, it, let's say you, know, you had a Pikachu out. If you have a Raichu in your hand, you need you you can't just summon Raichu. You gotta you know you gotta uh, tr basically essentially tribute Pikachu to summon Raichu. Okay, but do you don't need, you don't need it. Okay, interesting. Do like for some evolutions, do you need like stones or whatever, like support cards or anything? Um, kind of like like a ritual summon or I think something. The, I think the all fossil Pokemon, at least for a time, the fossil Pokemon required a fossil card in order to then be summoned. Oh my gosh, this yeah. is like it's like a ritual summon. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of like it's okay. similar. I would like, say I'm starting to see. Okay. The main battle mechanics. There's no like defending, there's no 
Um, like once you run out of HP, the Pokemon's gone. Okay. Yeah. And I and essentially the winner is determined by every when you start the game, you put either three or six cards kind of face down, kind of off off to one side. Every time you defeat an opponent's monster, you take one card. And the first uh, the the first person who gets who's able to take all I'll say six of their cards wins the game. Okay. So it's kind of, kind of like in the game. It's like you just kind of have six monsters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I do kind of like that. Okay, that sounds cool. The wrong way to play the game is just keeping them in a pack on your shelf for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and hoarding them from everyone else. Mm-hmm. So, so that- yeah, like hopefully this will kind of blow over soon. I kind of doubt it will. Like I said, Pokemon cards have always been deemed valuable by people forever. And it's probably only going to get worse, but hopefully this isn't necessarily impeding someone's exposure to the franchise. Yes. Yeah. And, and like I said, like it, the, how it gets exposed now has changed a lot. Cause mm-hmm. you know, there's way more, you know, there's way more games or more, you know, like it's just how kids play in general is just kind of different. <clears throat> so it's kind of like, I feel like a kid's more likely just to buy a Pokemon game than like get Pokemon cards these days, you know? Yeah. So yeah. there's that, but yeah, you have a point still. Mm. Okay, um, so my last little bit of thing I want to discuss. Um, I didn't plan a whole lot for like the like Road to E three this time, but I do want, like, I do want to to ask you. Now that the Star Wars license has been taken away exclusively, taken away from EA, yeah. How many Star Wars games are you expecting to be talked about at this year's E three? At least a couple, because like this is something, you know, we've been talking about for a while, which is like we want more than just EA. You know, granted, you know, for you know, they have made some okay games, some good, some not so great. But so it's kind of like I think it's just important to have that. So like now that that's kind of opened up, I know they're kind of like doing the ports and everything first, mm-hmm. just to kind of like you know, bring Star Wars games back to them. Because, like, other than, like, Fallen Order recently, they haven't really had a lot of Star Wars games in general. So, like... Yeah, yeah, outside of the ports of uh, uh, Jedi Academy, Outcast, Pod Racer, a couple other stuff like that, there really hasn't been much new Star Wars game content outside of the two Battlefronts and Fallen Order. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of like, yeah, we're ready for more content and i'm hoping that kind of i was kind of hope i know that we're supposed to have this whole high republic trilogy coming in like a year or two yeah which i'm kind of which i was kind of hoping we could wait on that and that that would be the time for like star wars games to come through and like you know we could have something here something there something there like but we'll have to see what happens i'm probably like not a ton right now i feel like they're gonna do more just do ports than do like any new game like a, a sequel for fallen orders definitely probably a year or two away mm-hmm. but other than that i don't know if they're gonna have any like original content for the next two years i'd say yeah i know ubisoft recently announced that they're making a, a star wars game that could at least be because ubisoft is usually uh at e3 like talks about one game that's kind of far off in advance like you know, the first Watch Dogs game they talked about at least three years before that came out. Um, maybe there's only two, but like they they talk they they're they're no stranger to talking about games before before they come out. Um, so it's very likely we'll at least get to see what era that Star Wars game, like at least concept art of what that Star Wars game is, is going to look like. Um, I know there's at least there's rumors of a Mandalorian game being made by somebody, mm-hmm. whether that's the Ubisoft game or someone else. I prefer we both, just we have more Star Wars content out there. Uh, I know there's that Star Wars Hunters, like free to play game that's that's coming. Probably not going to be any good, but you know it's at least something. 
So, yeah, they're trying. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I just want at some point in the near future a Star Wars Warriors game. You know, some of the Hyrule Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, that kind of game with Star Wars characters. Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, imagine just how cool it would be to, to like, you know, play as all the different Jedi, all the different Sith, like a bunch of other different random characters, just like having unique abilities, just, you know, running through hordes and hordes of insert Star Wars enemy here and just winning. Like, that just sounds like a ton of fun. <laughs> um, probably not this year but if it did i'll be excited <laughs> I mean, again i'm all for more star wars i mean star wars is you know huge obviously mm -hmm. but the star wars gaming has been something that in the last couple of years has kind of been lacking overall yeah so you know i think that would be help balance if they like boost that more then maybe you could like you know you know you don't have to make a movie series every two years yeah especially since ever. there really wasn't any movie tie-in content over the past three years or you know the past three movies aside from i think there was a lego force awakens game there's like there was like a sims bundle pack sure from ea of course yeah so that happened yeah but um sequel characters were in battlefront 2 but outside of that there really wasn't much of anything mm -hmm. which is really weird like star wars is back and you're not gonna yeah, but also a lot of people don't like the new ones, and they I think they kind of knew that. <laughs> but not at the time. Like games take a while to make. You just yeah, you have true, to be about the true. new game. Then, then you have to be about the new movies, just new Star Wars games. Yeah, that's just true. I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know, especially because there is like it's not like they're not making Star Wars stuff. I mean, the last two or three years, Mandalorian's huge. Clone Wars came back. Like. You know, we've been there's been Star Wars content coming. It's just I don't know. I think with games they could do a lot more. They just have to be a little more open minded and just go somewhere we haven't been in a while, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be that'd be nice. Um Yeah, I also also remember that the uh Knights of the Old Republic remake was was announced mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. So like we could see the first hints of that as well. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but this, exactly. this year could potentially be pretty, potentially pretty good for Star Wars stuff. But I'm not like expecting a whole lot because since the license was just recently lifted, not expecting it to like all of a sudden everybody start working on Star Wars stuff. But like maybe some people have concepts that they're willing to show. We'll see. Right. Okay, I think that's all I have on the docket. Anything else you want to discuss or bring up? Uh, that's all I've got scheduled here. Okay. So with that, we will see you all next time. Take care, everybody.